she was just trying to make a buck. She was a little crazy, but like, she was nice. So yeah, thanks. They were only, you know, $45 plus tip. Um, but sorry. Anyways, what can I help you with? A library card. Okay. Okay, perfect. I can totally help you with that. Um, just give me a sec to make sure that I'm opening the right program. Thank you. 
massive wolf that she ends up taking down and she takes the wolf back for food to feed her family. Now, soon after she gets back to her family, this beast-like creature comes tearing into their tiny little hovel of a cottage and demands, demands payment for the murder because this wolf was like a magical creature. This, this book has fantasy and creatures and humans all of it, but the wolf that she killed was of magical origin, a high fae, and so the beast demanded, like, retribution for the murdering of this wolf, so he ends up taking her over the borders into this land, magical land, where it's just conniving immortals living, and she's just one human, small human stuck in them, and it's a romance, it's adventure, it's epic, it's... I loved it. I would say it comes with trigger, it should come with trigger warnings because, um, their, the relationships in it, they could be definitely toxic, um, and toxic in kind of like a twilight kind of toxic way where it's like there's super possessive men over this woman and she's just kind of like letting things happen, but you know, I think it's part of the story, um, but I do know there are some people that feel like it should come with a trigger warning and there is some juicy romance novel romance novel stuff in this smut, if you'd like, uh, if that's your thing. And it was written by a woman, so you know, like, the dudes in this are... They do things. They do things. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, so, that's one. Okay, you said you are into historical fiction. This book called The Book of Lost Names. It's about a young woman named Ava who uses her talent in forgery to help Jewish children escape the Nazis and while helping them escape with different new identities um, she also figures out a way to preserve their actual family names sorry to preserve their actual names just in case after the war they had family coming to look for them this one was I believe an artist, so like these 
just from young child to 100 years old, the experiences that she's had, the things that she's seen, that bears witness to the greatest upheavals of the 20th century. Um, I really liked Violetta. I really liked her, the actual character in this story. Um, very relatable, I found, for women, <laughs> young women or women who have been confused and trying to make decisions in life, not always making the best ones, but, you know, life is happening as it's going, learning and growing, and this was very good. Okay, next. The Women of Troy. The Women of Troy. This is, this takes place directly after the fall of Troy. The Greeks are still on land. They're still collecting their booty and um, other pillaging, stealing, wartime spoils um, women to take them back to Greece with them, to their separate places in Greece, wherever that is. So I'm actually going to read you the back of this one because my summary can't do it justice, so give me a sec. Troy has fallen. The Greeks have won their bitter war. They can return home as victors. All they need is a good wind to lift their sails. But the wind has vanished. The seas be calmed by vengeful gods, and so the warriors remain in limbo. Camped in the shadow of the city they destroyed, kept company by the women they stole from it, the women of Troy. Helen, poor Helen, all that beauty, all that grace, and she was just a moldy old bone for feral dogs to fight over. Cassandra, who has learned not to be too attached to her own prophecies. They have only ever been believed when she can get a man to deliver them. Stubborn Amina, with her gaze fixed on the ruined towers of Troy, determined to avenge the slaughter of her king. Hecuba, howling and clawing her cheeks on the silent shore as if she could make her cries heard in the gloomy halls of Hades, as if she, as if she could wake the dead. And Briseis, carrying her future in her womb, the unborn child of the dead hero Achilles, once again caught up in the disputes of violent men, once again faced with a chance to shape history. I loved, I loved, loved, loved this book. I'd never read a story like this. Maybe it was just the time and place. I, I read the Iliad. I've, I've read the Iliad. Watched the Odyssey. <laughs> um, through literature classes all about Greeks, you know, Greek stories and Greek myths, tales, and, you know, the super focus of men in those stories and women just kind of being the uh, side pieces or extras or the instigators, you know, just sneaky. Anyway, this humanized the women. I really enjoyed this, so if you feel like that sounds like a beer alley, this is the book for you. just 